Hi everyone. A couple weeks ago, someone posted this really cool strap connector on the Simply Classic Facebook Inspiration Group. So today, I'm going to show you how to make it. Hi everyone, I am Chris and this is Simply Classic. Welcome to my channel. Today is going to be just a really quick tutorial on how to make this strap connector. You want to go to my website, simplyclassic.net, and download the pattern piece. It's free, so you can go ahead and make this. You're going to need this pattern piece for it. There are several different things we need for this because we do actually have what they call a button here. It's kind of like a rivet or a Chicago screw, and it has a head on it, a round head. Okay, I'm going to link below in the description where I got everything that I'm going to show you here today. Um, everything out of the ordinary anyway, the punch for it and then the button buckles. I'll show you all that and then you're going to need a one and a half inch, some kind of either D-ring or rectangle ring. The picture in the Simply Classic Inspiration Group has a rectangle ring. I didn't have one so we're just going to improvise. And then it's going to a half inch ring at the bottom. You could even use five eighths if you wanted to. Okay. So let me show you everything we need for this project. Okay, today of course you're gonna need your pattern piece. You're also gonna to need to cut another piece that is one inch long by, excuse me, one inch wide by two and a quarter inches long. Now I'm using leather today to show you how to do this, but of course faux leather or some kind of cork, any kind of non-fraying fabric will work. You want to, um, you're all, of course also going to need the Sam Brown buckle. Mine is a screw-on and I got it from Gold Star Tool. Again, I will link that below for you. You're going to need a small rivet. You're going to need a rivet setter. The presses don't work great for this. You're also going to need this punch. Um, this is an, a button punch and you can see it's got not only the punch but it's got this other piece down here and what that does is it punches this extra little line right here okay now if you don't have this punch you don't want to order the punch no problem you can just use a regular punch and then just use an exacto knife to make that extra little slit the great thing about the strap connector is you don't really need a swivel clip for it essentially this is the connector and the swivel clip in one so you would take and unhook this and then you would just unthread it and remove it from your bag and then just thread it on back to get it back on. And I kind of wondered about the strength of this because, you know, if you've got a pretty heavy bag, that could be a lot of weight. And I'll tell you, I've really tried to pull this and it's, it's pretty strong. I think, you know, I really think you'd be okay with it. All right, um, you're gonna need some kind of marking pen, a ruler, all the a whole punch, an actual whole punch. Okay, so take your pattern piece, and the first thing you want to do is mark your center. So you'll see on the pattern piece, I actually have the center line marked. So I'm just going to draw a line here and then draw this across. Okay. So there's my center. Now line your pattern piece center up with that center, up with that line. And then we're going to actually punch out this top hole. So I'm just going to mark that. And then I'm going to punch it. Okay. Okay. So 
from here, you want to put your D ring or rectangle ring, whatever it is you have on, and line it up with that center mark. Fold this piece over. So when I actually cut this piece, it's one and a half inches wide, um, which is the exact width of this piece here. So I just made sure that it was nice and straight and then I, I cut it with a rotary cutter all the way down. And the length of it is about 12 inches, okay? So, I'm going to line up our ring with the center here. You can put a clip just to kind of hold everything in place. Take your pattern piece, line up the center with the very top. Make sure that your hole is in the right spot. So make sure everything's good to go. And I am. And then from here, you want to go ahead and mark the rest of the pattern. Now, you can either use a marking pen or an awl. If you're using leather, I'm actually going to use an awl to do this. So I'm just going to hold this in place, and I'm just going to draw this out. And this is going to actually be my cutting line. Okay, you see that? All right, from here, you wanna go ahead and put your button on. So if you have a rivet kind of button where you press it in like a rivet, you'll go ahead and do that. Now, you may want to put a piece of Decoville light or heavy here to just kind of stabilize that. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm not gonna do that today, but if I was gonna put this on a bag, I would do that. I would fuse a piece of Decoville light probably right down the middle of this, just to kind of help everything um, have a little more stability. So I'm gonna screw this on, and if I was going to put this on a bag, I would also put some Loctite to hold this in place. Okay, from here, go ahead and get some, you're going to need some glue, either some Fabri-Tac or leather glue. Um, we just want to basically tack this in place, hold it in place so that we can sew. So, I'm just going to get some on here. And if you've used Fabri-Tac, you know it really dries quickly, which is why I'm using this today. Oops. Okay, so make sure your ring is right on that center mark and then fold this over. Now, when you fold it over, you really want to make sure that this top part is lined up here, okay? The rest of it isn't as important because we're going to be cutting it away, but we're not going to cut this top part. So really try to make sure that's lined up well. So at this point, this is what you should have. And see how nice and clean my edges are lined up right here and right here. I'm just worried from this line above. Okay. All right. Now I'm using a contrasting thread today so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna zoom you in and basically what we're going to do is we're going to stitch across the top as close as we can to the ring. Then of course we're gonna stitch down and around. You don't wanna stitch on the line you made. You wanna stitch, because that's your cutting line, remember. You wanna stitch about an eighth of an inch to the inside of that line. I also have my zipper foot on here because I want to get as close as I can to this ring. So let's go ahead and get you positioned so that we can get this sewn. Okay, so just getting as close to the ring as possible. One more 
more stitch. Now when you go to turn, you want to make sure you protect your hardware here. So I'm just going to put this on and then sew down the side here. And turn. So this is what we have right now. And there it is from the back. You want to get your super sharp pair of scissors here. And we are actually going to, sorry y'all, wrong, wrong side. We're going to trim this. Now I'm not going to trim these sides here. I'm not going to trim this here. I'm going to trim these angles, then I'm going to trim all the way down and back up. Start right here. And you don't want to do choppy cuts. You want to try to go ahead and get them nice and smooth and clean. And I'm using my line as a guide on where to cut. Okay, so what that does is it gives me a nice smooth edge here without having trying to put them together and match them perfectly. We have a nice easy that we can, it, since this is leather, if I was putting this on a bag, I'd burnish this and edge paint it. You want to just take your time with this. Try to get the two sides looking as close as possible to each other. Okay. And then there's, there's the back. All right. For your strap keeper, since I'm if you have a one inch piece and you're using a cork or a faux leather, you can go ahead and fold your sides. Just do your normal thing where you fold your long ends into the middle and then top stitch. This is going to be too thick for me to do that. So all I'm going to do is do two lines of top stitching down this. Now that I cut it larger so that I could get an, it's hard to top stitch a tiny little, um, you know, a quarter inch piece of leather. So I made it larger. I'm going to stitch two lines in the middle but close together and then I'm going to trim it with my scissors. So 
there's one. I'll do one more pass here. Okay, and then you can either use, it's probably a little bit too close, but, well, come on, focus. There you go. But you get the idea. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and cut these so that they're about an eighth of an inch away, just like we did with the other. So I'm going to just, my ends are, I need to burn these ends here. And all I'm doing is just burning the um, threads. Okay. You want to go ahead and punch two holes in the strap keeper, one on each end. And then what we're going to do is fold it back on itself. So we're going to take it, we're just going to fold it back on itself, and we're going to hold it together with a rivet right there. This is probably the hardest part of this entire project, is setting that rivet. At least, that's been for me. <laughs> so... Small hole in here, put one in the other side. So you're going to take your rivet, you're going to put it underneath from the or put it from the bottom up, and then fold the top over that. This is what you have. We're going to put the cap on. And then we're going to set this rivet. So I'm going to take my little base of my rivet setter here and try to kind of stretch it in between here. And then set my rivet. Okay, so now we have a teeny tiny little strap keeper. Take your main piece again, and we need to go ahead and punch the hole for the button. So if you notice on your piece, on your um, pattern piece that I made, look at the direction of that little tiny line there. That's the direction you want the slit to be in. So when you line this up, the slit's going up towards the top. Okay, so I'm just going to lay the pattern piece down, mark a little hole here, and then I'm going to make sure, again, that this slit is facing towards the top.
Okay. So now all we have to do is thread it together. So you're going to take your connector, you're going to put your strap keeper on there, you're going to put your D-ring, your smaller D-ring on there, which I forgot to get, so I'm going to borrow one from over here. I think. There we go. Okay. So thread your D-ring on. Thread this down through your keeper. And then just hook it. And just like that, you have a nifty staff connector. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. I like it. Okay. So, until next time, y'all. Happy sewing.